Welcome, welcome, said Aaron. You wanted to know about the displace of beasts, then? Yes, I first encountered the Meloria forests. Deadly hunters, they are. Never forget, Chauncey. But, of course, I'll never see you again, either. Sharp claws, very nasty tentacles. They project this beautiful illusory field. They'll be on you like flies on a beggar, and you'd never know they're even there. Best you stay away from the ruins at Ibrina, though. I believe it's a breeding ground for them, as they were exceptionally aggressive when we last visited. Best of luck to you all, and try not to get yourselves killed. Welcome back to the Forge of Sagas, and today we're going to be taking on a 3D printer rescue. My cousin made this displacer beast, but the legs didn't print properly. So now we've got this legless displacer beast that we really can't use for anything. Let's see if we can fix that. The first thing we need to do is figure out how to pose a model with no legs. I grabbed the Azerite Ruin Kit from Games Workshop and I found this column which I can use to support the model as if it's lunging through the air. However, we still have to hide these stub legs. To accomplish this, we're going to use some clear blister pack plastic and some acrylic water effect resin to create a magical transition as if the displacer beast is moving from its cloaked to its uncloaked state as it lunges at the players. We're going to start by cutting thin strips of the blister pack plastic so that we can create a frame on which we can build up our water effect. You can cut this frame into any shape you desire. I added some spikes here and that's going to help give it a nice variety to the shape. Once you're ready to attach your strips, you want to make sure that you size them up first, do a little dry fit to see where you're going to put them. Then you're going to grab a hair dryer and you're going to heat up the plastic. This is going to allow it to bend and conform to the shape of the model better. Otherwise, we'd get this really square, blocky shape, and that's really not going to make for a smooth transition between the model we have and the effect that we're adding. One last thing to do before we fully complete this plastic hula skirt is we want to make sure that we drill in a pin that's going to allow us to attach our model to our base. This is going to allow for the illusion that it's leaping and, again, allow us to escape the fact that we don't have any legs. So I'm going to grab my 1 16th inch drill bit, and I'm going to drill a hole right into the hip. And then once I'm done, I'm going to glue a piece of paper clip in there and I'm going to leave it pretty long so that I have some leeway when I go to attach the model to the base. Once we have our plastic base made, we can start adding our water effect. This is Vallejo Water Texture Acrylic. I've used it before when I did bases for an item at the Deepkin Army and I wanted to have waves crashing around their feet. And I find that it works for a lot of different magical effects. It's really nice to work with. You can sculpt it to a degree, but you do have to take your time with it. So we're going to do really thin layers. Just to start, we want to coat the plastic frame we made. because This is the base we're going to build the rest of our effect off of. And here's how it looks after the first layer. It's going to be white when you put it on, but it will dry clear. So don't worry about that. Make sure that you keep the pin clean throughout this process because that's going to make it easier at the end when we go to attach the model to the base. While we let that resin sit for 24 hours to cure fully, let's talk about working on the base. The image in the monster manual shows the displacer beast is black and it reminded me of a panther when I looked at it, so I wanted this more jungle ruin, kind of something you'd see in Indiana Jones. So I rolled out some green stuff flat and stuck it onto the base. This is kind of the green stuff I had available, I didn't have much left, so I made this splotchy pattern where it was in different places. That way it would be like there's some ruin, but then there'll be dust, there'll be vegetation, and we'll get to that in time. Right now, just take your sculpting tool and carve out some bricks in the green stuff that you have. If you're doing the full base, great. If you're doing more of a pattern like I've got, just make sure that your lines line up. So where you've got lines, make sure it transitions to the other broken apart pieces of the floor. Now while we let the green stuff cure, we can turn our attention back to the displacer beast. Here we can see that it's cured enough that we can work on it. There are a few pieces on the interior that are not completely set, but that will happen. As we apply the next layer of our water effect, we can start to really build the shape of this illusion. You can see I'm filling in the gaps between my frame and trying to create a little bit more of a rounded edge. Again, I'm drawing inspiration for more of the jungle theme. You know, this is more of a heat mirage where it should be smooth edges as opposed to maybe something more fractal that you might find in an icy environment. As you translate this to your own 3D print rescues, let the model take you where you need to go. You know, think about the environmental effects, the habitat, other things that will inform you what kind of effect you should be designing. Now while we let that dry, we'll turn our attention back to the base. We need to fill in these gaps between the brick layers, and for that I'm using this Games Workshop texture paint. You could also do this by pouring in PVA glue and dropping sand on it or gravel or any other kind of base material you want. This is just what I had on hand, a bottle was running out and I wanted to finish it off. And now we continue the cycle of working on one thing while the other thing dries. 
So for here, we're going to grab the model and we're going to start filling in the area where the legs are still visible. Here, I'm blending the resin between the leg stumps, the tail, and the frame we've made around the outside. This is going to give us a nice clean interior that hides all the places where the print failed, as well as give us this nice smooth interior. Again, I'm going for this more mirage feel, so I want to be able to create these nice smooth tendrils of magical energy. I also decided to apply some of the resin to other places where the print had been completely successful. This is going to help tie our effect together. As the illusion is dissipating, it's dissipating faster at the front where there's more movement, more activity, and, well, where the model printed correctly. So I applied some dabs of the resin to the shoulders just to give it a little extra movement. Again, this is just building a base layer. I'm going to tease this out more as I go on, but it's just going to add to that effect of the illusion dissipating. And now back to the base. Let's get some paint on this while we're waiting for that to dry. I'm choosing some Agrax Dunes contrast paint from Games Workshop because that gives a really nice sandstone texture for these more tropical environments. I'm going to put this on all of the bricks that are on the base as well as the column itself to give it that nice stony texture. Next, I'm going to come in and paint anywhere where there's sand or gravel with a little bit of screaming skull. This is going to give it a darker base than the wraith bone that I used to prime the model. And that's just going to help break up and create a difference between the stonework and the debris. Next, I decided to do my detail work. I used Pterodon Turquoise and Flesh Terrors Red from Games Workshop to create these very South American colors. And then I accented the piece using the bright gold from Army Painter. I then turned my attention back to the dirt where I put down a layer of Saigor Brown. This gave us a nice dark texture around the dirt and differentiated it further from the stone. I then did an overbrush with Einrock skin. I wanted to bring this dirt back up to a lighter shade just because it is a tropical, sandy environment that I'm working with, but I still wanted to keep some of those dark undertones to differentiate the dirt from the stone. Lastly, I put on a layer of Skeleton Horde contrast just to darken it down a little bit, give it that earthy feel again without being as dark as it was when we had the Saigor Brown. Then the last thing to add was just a layer of brown wash. This is going to help bring out those recesses and really blend together all our different colors and give it that ancient feel that has been weathered. It's had issues over the years and now it's kind of crumbled into disrepair and become the hunting ground for our displacer beast. For the rim of the base, I chose the Agros Dunes just because, again, it's a little bit of that darker shade that we've been using for the stone. And it's just a really nice color for the rim of the base, frankly. I just like it. And now we're going to switch back over to the Displacer Beast, and we're just going to add that last layer. Again, I'm trying to fill in this core a little bit more, create these nice smooth mirage effects, really just finish out things. This process of building up the resin took me four days to do, just because I wanted to give it time to set. I know that working in smaller layers is going to get me a better overall shape and make my life easier in the project. So be patient as you build up these layers, take your time, and I promise you, you'll come out with a really nice effect at the end. Alright, now I promise this is the last time we're going to switch between the base and the model. All I want to do now is add a little greenery. This is a jungle after all, it needs some green. So I'm going to add some PVA glue to a bunch of stuff where I think vegetation would grow. Then I'm going to grab this little tin from a noodle box and I'm going to grab some green flocking. You can get this stuff at any hobby store. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby because they had a coupon. And who doesn't love saving money? I really recommend having some kind of container under the model because it's going to save you a lot of time and clean up later. The last detail I want to add is this Spanish moss that I had laying around to create this effect of crawling vines. Again, we're in the jungle. This is this kind of thing that happens. So we're just going to use some PVA glue to secure that on there. And this is going to actually have an added effect later of helping us hide the pin when it joins the model to this column. Now it's finally time to return to the model. I decided to take out my file and kind of trim this down a little bit just to give myself that really nice smooth finish. You don't have to do this step, but again, for that mirage effect I wanted, I wanted just a little smoother than how I had it. And after a quick coat of primer, it's time to start painting. Here I'm using Games Workshop's Black Templar Contrast Paint. I like how it goes on, that translucent quality of the contrast paint really gives you that fur quality when you're doing something like a panther, where they have that little shine, that little seeing through of a lighter tone. And I think that it really nicely fills in the gaps, so that's why I'm going to use it here. However, I'm not going to use it on the parts where we're going to do a color shift effect later because it doesn't have the same solid quality. This is only for the parts of the Displacer Beast that are going to be fur black. 
Once that's dry, we're going to apply a layer of regular matte black paint to any area where we applied the acrylic resin. This is going to give us the base layer for our color shift paint. I've tried doing it over other color layers and it will give you a shimmer effect, but for this I really wanted to focus on the shifting nature of the color shift paint. This will give us the effect of this displacer piece coming out of this illusory mirage that's been hiding it from the party, and now it's going to attack them and tear their faces off. So we need to just get this nice smooth layer of matte black down. Next I'm going to come in with a little bit of white paint and just touch up some of the areas that I covered with the contrast when I started. Things like the paw pads, the eyes, the interior of the ears, just these little areas where I'm going to add some other colors to really bring this creature to life. Next up I'm going to come in with another contrast paint, this is Vultus Pink, and I'm going to use this for the interior of the ears, the interior of the mouth, and the pads on the tentacles just to give it that you know nice fleshy purple that we see in most D&D art for the Displacer Beast. With everything else ready, it's finally time to grab that color shift paint. I'm using a set from Green Stuff World, this particular one is called Emerald Gateway, and I'm going to start by just applying a little bit of this in a random pattern on the model. I want to give it that energy feel, that there's this mystic aura, and so I'm going to have that random pattern, and I'm going to introduce some other colors to this as well, beyond this particular green-blue shift. Next I came in with a layer of this tropical green color shift, this gives a more red-yellow hint, and that's going to give it a little brighter tone, again embrace this more tropical jungle feel that we want in this mirage as well. The final color I'm going to use is Nebula Copper. This is going to bring a little bit of an orangey red hue and it's really going to diversify the color spectrum. This way we have basically the entire color spectrum represented on the model and this will give it a really nice multi-spectrum shimmer that will give us that, again, very illusory feel that I'm trying to capture in this model. Once we're done painting, it's finally time to attach the model to the base. Take your time when you line things up, you want to make sure that the model is sitting exactly how you want it to be, especially when you're doing this kind of no flight stand flight stand support system, where you're pinning something into a standing column. But once you're happy, find your spot and drill in. I'm again using the 1 16th inch drill bit, that way it's the right size for that paper clip I'm using to pin it. And now the only thing left to do is to glue them in place. So I'm going to apply a generous amount of super glue to this pin. I really want this to stick because this is the only point of support for the model, so I really want to make sure this stays in this pillar. So once I've got that done, I'm going to stick them together and hold them in place until the glue sets, and then we're done. And here you have it. Our legless displacer beast has become a fearsome jungle predator lunging from the shadows towards his unsuspecting prey. I hope that this video has taught you something about how you can save your own 3D printed models that maybe didn't print exactly the way you wanted them to, and still turn them into something cool that you can put on the tabletop. If you enjoyed this video, I ask you to give us a like and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date. I'm going to be doing a lot of different projects, be it kit bashing models, building terrain pieces, and more 3D print rescues like this one. Finally, I just want to thank you all for watching this video. And I hope to see you all again the next time we ignite the Forge of Sagas.